Hello everybody, this is a new channel for class 7 science. Here we'll be having fun with science, so please follow me for the new updates. I'll be starting with your uh, second chapter, Nutrition in Animals, and introducing you and teaching you the human digestive system. So we'll be starting with nutrition in animals, the human digestive system. First of all, I'll tell you what is what type of nutrition takes place in human beings and many animals, that is holozoic nutrition. So human beings, they follow a holozoic nutrition. I start with a concept map of this holozoic nutrition. This is the concept map. Holozoic nutrition covers five steps. Ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ejection. The first step which takes place in this holozoic nutrition is ingestion. Ingestion means taking in of food inside your body. In the case of human beings, the process of ingestion takes place by mouth. So this is the first step of our holozoic nutrition. Once the food enters into the mouth, then the second step which takes place in our nutrition is digestion. The process of digestion takes place in the entire alimentary canal. We will be coming to the process of digestion after this. Fine? Now, so this process of, in this process of digestion, the large molecules which has been ingested by mouth, they are insoluble in nature are broken down into small water soluble molecules in our alimentary canal. So in this, this digestive system takes place inside our body. After the process of digestion which gets completed in the small intestine, for this you can uh, follow my next video, uh, the absorption of the digested food takes place. This absorption of digested food takes place in the small intestine because that is the site of complete digestion of food. In the small intestine, the walls of the wall, uh, the walls of the small intestine has got uh, small finger-like projections which are called as villi. These projections, what they do is they absorb the completely digested food, which is very fine, small molecules, water soluble, and then through the bloodstream, the food passes to every cell of the body. So this absorption of food takes place at the walls of the small intestine. Hope it is clear. Now come to the fourth step that is assimilation. Assimilation is basically assimilating the digested food. See every part of our body requires food. Every, every part of the body means ki every cell of our body. So how the food reaches to every cell of the body? I told in the absorption the food enters into the bloodstream through the walls of the small intestine. So once the food enters into the bloodstream to, to the, into, through the fine blood capillaries, it reaches to every cell of our body. When the food reaches to every cell of the body, there the food is assimilated through the bloodstream and then it is converted into carbon dioxide. The carbohydrates, the simple carbohydrates are converted into carbon dioxide and water and the amino acids are further converted into proteins and the fatty acids are further converted into fats for as per our requirement for energy, for growth and for repair. So this takes place at every body cell. So this completes the process of digestion over here. Now the part of the food which has been left undigested in the small intestine, from the small intestine it enters into the large intestine. In the large intestine from the undigested food water and salts are being absorbed and that semi-solid food which is the undigested food it is through it is stored uh, uh, in the rectum and then thrown outside of the body through the process of ejection. It is thrown outside the body, it's stored in rectum, then it is thrown outside the body by the anus in the form of feces. Whenever we go to the toilet, we pass out those uh, undigested food in the form of feces. Now we will start with the human digestive system which follows the holozoic nutrition. As we have discussed, the first step of holozoic nutrition is ingestion, that is taking in of food. 
The taking in of food in we human beings takes place by the organ that is mouth organ. This mouth is also called as buccal cavity. It consists of tongue, teeth and salivary glands. As you take in the food, take the food inside your mouth, the first thing we do is chew the food. Chewing and grinding of the food takes place. That takes place with the help of teeth. This process of chewing and grinding of the food and breaking the big pieces of food into small pieces is called as mastication. After the chewing and grinding of the food takes place, then the tongue in our mouth helps in mixing the saliva. Where the saliva is produced? Saliva is a digestive juice which is produced from the salivary glands. So this saliva which is produced from the salivary glands is mixed along with the food which has been broken into small pieces with the help of tongue. So tongue purpose is to mix the food along with the saliva. Once the food gets mixed with the saliva, the juices in the digest, uh, present in the saliva breaks down the carbohydrate in the food partially into simple sugar. So this partially digested food now passes to the other organ that is esophagus. So this is the purpose of buccal cavity, chewing and grinding of the food, producing of saliva from the salivary glands which are present in the buccal cavity. Then the purpose of tongue is to mix this saliva with the food and uh, from the saliva the digestive juices are produced which converts the carbohydrates into simple sugar partially. Now this partially digested food passes into the esophagus. Esophagus is also called as the food pipe. Now the question is, ki once the food enters into the esophagus, how will it connect with the first organ that is stomach? How will it reach to stomach? So for that to happen, through this esophagus, which is also called as food pipe, the walls of the esophagus have a wave-like movement. They show uh, contraction and relax relaxation which this movement is called as peristalsis. So with the help of this muscular movement which are taking place along the walls of esophagus which is called as peristalsis that is the contraction and the relaxation the food is pushed to the organ that is called as stomach. Now the food has reached to the stomach. After the food reaches to the stomach the balls of the stomach, so we have come over here, see this is the stomach. Stomach is a U-shaped gland which is present on the left side of our abdomen. It is the widest part of our elementary canal. The stomach, the balls of the stomach secretes three types of juices or acids you can say that is hydrochloric acid, mucus and secretion which includes the enzyme pepsin. Why hydrochloric acid is produced? Hydrochloric acid is produced from the walls of the stomach because the food which has reached to stomach has to be digested in an acidic medium in stomach. First purpose and the second purpose is whatever food is reaching over there, if there is any bacteria in it, so that has to be killed. So that happens in the presence of hydrochloric acid. Now the thing is why mucus is produced? Since this HCl can attack the walls of the stomach which might be dangerous. So in order to prevent the lining of the stomach, protect the lining of the stomach, mucus is secreted. The third one, that is the secretions which are produced, includes the enzyme pepsin. The purpose of pepsin is to convert the proteins into amino acids. It is an enzyme which breaks down the protein molecules into the simpler molecules called as amino acids. This much of process of digestion is completed in stomach. But this all this process takes place about three hours. That is, this process is called as basically the churning process. Churning process means, in, in the churning process, the bigger molecules are churned into smaller molecules. This entire process takes place 3 hours and it has been observed uh, by the scientists that 
through the process of the churning the food does not enters into the small intestine till the time the churning has been completed so that is the reason they always say that you have to keep a gap of at least 4 hours at least 3 to 4 hours between two meals so that at least you give time for your stomach to complete the process of churning of the bigger meals now the food reaches into the small intestine small intestine is the site of complete digestion this canal which we were talking about this is the entire digestive system along with these organs there are three more associated there are two more associated organs in this digestive tract that is the liver and the pancreas the liver and the pancreas they are the associated glands which pour their secretions into the small intestine through the duct fine so these are called as the associated glands now the food has reached into the small intestine it is arenical that it is called as a small intestine jabki it is the longest part of the alimentary canal this whole system of digestive system this is called as the alimentary canal it is also called as gut they always say you eat this which is good for your gut so it is the longest part of your alimentary canal it is around 7.5 meters long then also it is called as a small intestine because it is a narrow tube which is coiled and it is present in the form of in the coiled form in your abdomen okay so this small intestine is the site of complete digestion and the second thing is absorption when we are doing the holozoic nutrition the third step was absorption so both these processes takes place in small intestine along with the associated glands that is pancreas and liver liver is a is the largest gland of the body it is about triangular shape and pancreas is also present just below the stomach the purpose of liver is to produce a juice which is called as bile juice which is stored in gall bladder temporarily till the time it is secreted or it is poured into the small intestine and pancreas produce the pancreatic juice so in the intestine in small intestine you get three types of secretions one is the bile juice which is produced from liver but stored in gall bladder one is the pancreatic juice which is produced by the pancreas and the third is the intestinal juice which is produced by the walls of the intestine so these three types of secretions are poured in the small intestine now the food that is the partially digested food which has reached into the small intestine so for on that food all these three secretions will act the purpose the, the most import bile juice is one of the most important secretions which has got a very important process over here the purpose of bile, uh, bile juice is to convert the fats into small droplets this makes the further uh, conversion of those small droplets into fatty acids and glycerol very easy so the fats are converted into small droplets with the help of bile juice in the small intestine itself the purpose of pancreatic juice is to convert this small droplets which uh, which has been obtained from the bile juice or the fats into fatty acids and glycerol and the proteins into their simpler compounds that is amino acids and the carbohydrates into the simple compounds that is glucose the purpose of the intestinal juice is also to convert any amount of carbohydrate which is present in the food into simple forms that is glucose any amount of proteins which are present into amino acids any amount of fats which are present into fatty acids and glycerol so hence in small intestine the complete food is converted into digested food in the water soluble simple form now this water soluble simple form of food which is called as the digested food has to be absorbed how will it be absorbed how will it reach to every cell of the body for the energy for the growth and for the repair for that this food which is present in the small intestine over here is absorbed by the walls of the small intestine in the walls of the small intestine and these the same make it here here 
in this in the balls of the small intestine this is the balls of the small intestine you can see there are finger like outgrowths millions of finger like outgrowths you can see millions and millions of finger like outgrowths which are called as villi what is the purpose of these finger like outgrowths to increase the surface area for the absorption of food so that the absorption of food happens rapidly so the digested food which is present over here is rapidly absorbed by these villi in the walls of the intestine and there are there are many uh, blood capillaries and some blood vessels which are present close to the surface in this villi so once the for, uh, digested food enters into these this wall of small intestine it immediately enters into the blood stream and the fine blood capillaries and through the blood this food is reach to entire body it reaches to entire body to every body cell to every body organ to uh, our whole body to every part of our body and in that way then when it reaches to every part of our body then the process of assimilation takes place once it reaches to every part of the body then this digested food is broken down the breakdown of this digested food further happens in the presence of oxygen in the presence of oxygen the glucose is converted into carbon dioxide and water along with energy which is used for our various purposes and growth and repair the amino acids which were there in our digested food are used for building up our body for growth of body for repair of body and converting them into proteins the fatty acids and glycerol which have reached over every body cell are then converted to build our build the components of the body or for the storage as fats in our body so in this form the assimilation of food takes place so hence the complete digestion of food takes place over here now what about the undigested food which was remaining in the small intestine it is not that the entire amount of food is digested there is some amount of food left in the small intestine which is undigested or which is unabsorbed so this un undigested and the unabsorbed food which is lying there in the small intestine itself it enters into the large intestine the large intestine is around 1.5 meters long but then also it is called as large intestine because it is quite wider than the small intestine so because of its width its width it is called as the large intestine once the food enters into the large intestine the uh, extra amount of water and the salts which are present uh, once the undigested food enters into the large intestine the extra amount of water and salts which are present in that food are absorbed by the large intestine hence converting this uh, undigested food into a semi solid paste this semi solid paste which is also called as feces is stored in the rectum temporarily this is the rectum temporarily so here it is stored and whenever we go to the toilet we remove them as feces with the help which is also guided with the help of an anal sphincter which is present at the mouth of anus that is an anal sphincter is present here which guards the opening and closing of the anus so whenever we go to the toilet through the anus this undigested food is thrown out of our body in the form of feces so this is your entire digestive system this entire digestive tract again i'm repeating it is called as the alimentary canal or the gut it is around 8 to 8.5 meter long if you have any queries do put it in the comment box i'll definitely try to resolve them and do like subscribe my channel for more upcoming exciting videos and share it and don't forget to share it with your friends